Cheers to um, Wolfer Estates uh, Winery. Uh, thank you so much for uh, sending me a bottle of rosé, summer rosé. It's fabulous. Hold on. Sip. Before we go into um, our big reveal, I just want to dedicate this show to my grandmother. Uh, she was a great woman in my life. Yesterday was her birthday. She would have been about, I think, 102, and I miss her deeply. So I just want to say... Graham in heaven, thank you for helping me get here. And I just want to point out that my grandmother had a radio show when she wow. was younger. So um, Bobby does have a picture of her, and he will show it when he gets it. But um, anyway, so for those of you have, who have been watching the living room and listening to us, um, Christine has been putting out suggestions for a haircut. So um, everyone from I Speak With Mama's group, Merrick Mama's group, all the different people in her life on her Facebook page have been giving her suggestions for a haircut. So she went, I think it was today, and she got a fabulous new look. So um, give a big round of applause for the big reveal for Christine's hair. Christine from the living room here. I'm outside Platinum Salon on Merrick Road in Seaford, New York, and it is time for the hair challenge. Bonnie Jean, our wonderful viewer, sent in the final cut. I'm getting cut and colored today, something a little different for me. Be sure to tune in tonight. See you later. Hold you me. If she has this on her shoulder. If she has this on her shoulder. So I'm trying to decide the right cut and to match pieces, the picture. If these pieces are just, yeah. see this? If these pieces are just layers, hang here. Right. And that's her length. I can't tell that. Well, again, Stephen's been cutting my hair for years. I've been known to come in and just say to him, do what you want. So I'm going to trust him to do the best he can with the picture. We will come into hair salons, and we have these pictures that are totally unrealistic. So, again, putting my faith in the professionals, yeah. and I know I'm going to look terrific when are we're done. Are you growing these? I think I want to keep the bangs. They cover this big, long wrinkle across but my do want, head. Do you want them to eventually do that? Maybe. Yeah, why not? It's hair, it grows, right? Alrighty. We're ready. I know I'll look out of here looking great. So you're going to see Gwen first? No. Oh, no. Gwen wants to cut first. You want me to cut it? I'm balayaging it, yes. Okay. I've never seen it quiet here. It's actually kind of working out. Yes. Yeah, I feel like I walked away and left it in my pocket. Look at Stephen go with that razor. This is going to be so cool when I work with that. That's a lot of hair coming out. Like, wow. Wow. <laughs> hair coming off. I love how you're twisting it. Yeah, if you want to add more, you know, references. Oh, yeah, Stephen is yeah. thinking hard about how to make this haircut work on it. The picture is longer in the front than it is in the back. It's shaggy. He is being very precise in making this happen for me. Good. 
gonna add a little piece to the bag you have in there. This is the sixth level, okay. which is kind of what you are in that lighter area. Yeah, that works so I mostly this on the root, and then I put an ash because we don't want to be lifting lots. We want the red tones. A drop of the five bed, and that will ash out that six. Just mostly this. Okay. This will ash this out a little bit. Okay. Because if you, that's why you lift more. The six is kind of lighter. It's kind of what you have up here, not here. This is kind of a combination, and I like this combination. And it's going to oxidize. Then, on according to what you lift to, we can pick a target color, which try to get more of the ashy tones. But I have to see what you lift to. See, these are too light to me. That looks too light. Yeah, so I, I would pick an ashy. I have to see what you lift to. Work, right? And then I'll show you the color. Platinum salon, using my Long Island loyalty card. Sign up today at longislandloyalty.com. Are you taking it or am I taking it? Okay. Oh, okay. Hi, we're back. I'm back on the couch. What do we think, everybody? Call in and let us know what you think of my new hair. 516-945-9099. Um, you all just saw some videotape. I know the audio was uh, a little bit off. I had a fabulous experience today um, at Platinum Salon on Merrick Road in Seaford. I was able to pay for my haircut and highlights and color and blow out with Long Island Loyalty points. They take Long Island Loyalty. Um, and Gwen did the color, and Steven, who's been cutting my hair for years, did the cut. And I cannot tell you, they were so attentive. They really talked to me about what would work with my hair. The pictures I showed them um, were a little blonder as far as the color went on the ends. I don't know how much the camera's picking this up. Um, and they really let me know that my hair would not pick, you know, lift that much. Without frying it. Exactly. And we didn't want to do that. So and let we me didn't ask want you, it red. So let me ask you a question. So I know we're doing this big reveal and we had a couple of shows up to it. So it's like a, so basically it's a big deal. It's a big deal for it's, women. It's a big right? deal for women to get their hair, to change to their change look. Their do you hair. feel like this was a drastic change for you? No, I've always been pretty adventurous with my hair. I've had the ha Halle Berry short, I've had the 80s spiral perm, um, tear it grows. I think I said that on one of the videos actually. Um, I get bored, and that was why I was ready yeah. for a change. Yeah, um, I do think it looks amazing, yeah. and the good part about it is that you have straight hair. So this you could wear this cut and it's not going to kink up like crazy. Right. It'll wave up, right. but it yeah, won't it will, kink like up. I have a little bend yeah. to my hair. Yeah, yeah my hair not... would go into ringlets with that, yeah. and I would look yeah. like a okay. poodle that got caught okay. in a fan. Well, that's the point I was trying to make. They were fabulous about talking to me about what my hair would do, talking with each other, the stylist and the colorist, about you know where to cut, where to put the color. You know, they consulted with me together prior yeah. to the process starting. Um, I think they're just fabulous there. Uh, I highly recommend them. Use your loyalty card. You know, this is not that different than what I had. Of course, I had existing bangs that we needed to work with. Um, the final cut, I, I don't have the picture right now to show you, uh, was a picture that was sent in by Bonnie Jean. Uh, and I thank you for that, my friend Bonnie. Um, and it was just a fun experience. It's fun to feel pampered for the day. And, awesome. and I thank everybody that's for sending awesome. in that's uh, And it was a lot of fun to do it because all the girls got to you know, get involved. So yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it was really thing. terrific. So, so I, listen, I had a fun day with that. The next time I do something like run a marathon 26 miles, we're going to bring we're gonna gonna film it. Okay? Absolutely. We're going to do that. All right? Now, only kidding. I'm busting your chops. Um, anyway, so Christine and I didn't see each other because last week I was out partying like a rock star. You never called in. I figured you had too Listen, much wine by 7 o'clock. It's not even too much wine. It was like I wasn't even available. But I have to tell you this right now. I don't know how Paris Hilton does it because I am younger. literally out of my mind. I haven't, I come home, there's laundry everywhere, there's no food in the fridge. I got dog, I got husband, I got kids. I'm crazy and I'm like, I, I literally have to, I have to take it down a notch. I am literally out every night. It's crazy. I don't even know how I'm doing it, quite frankly. I'm running on like, I don't know I, what. I, 
I often say I don't know how you women that work full time do it because I can't and I'm get doing done it. what I need to. And, and hold on a summer, second, and I'm doing it now. And she's doing it while having her wine <laughs> at night. Um, you know, in the summer for me, I feel like it's only a five day week because I drop out of life every weekend and just spend it at the beach. Yeah. And I can't get it done. And you're still working two days a week. I work two days a week. I consider Wednesdays a work day too because usually I do all of my show prep on Wednesday. Um, so it, it's almost like a, a, full, a full day. Full day, and um, yeah, I don't know so how I, work I do three it. days, and that gives me two days to just and chill. And I still it. have the pressure. I still have kids at home. Yeah, you and still I have laundry. Still have that still pressure have... to make a meal, uh, have it out there, have it ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Drive whoever around. Oh, which and part that of the gives way? me a good segue. Two of my sons are in the audience today. Uh, Christopher and Lucas. They came to support Mama. Yes. As you should, because she has supported you. You little bastards. <laughs> she gave up her life for you. She got stretch marks for you. Never mind stretch marks. They gutted me like a deer to I'm, have I'm, them. I'm, I'm sure she has cellulite from you. God damn it. She didn't um, drink wine for nine months for you. Right there, you deserve a medal. They're awesome young men. No, they're good boys. You know I'm only kidding, guys, of, right? Of the, the men that they are today. Listen, so like, I love I was, them as grown ups. I know you do. I, I know really you do. do. They're great kids. So um, I was at uh, my my partner has a house on Fire Island, and we've been going out there quite a lot this year because one of the bitches that used to hang there is no longer hanging there because I ba basically booted her out. So the environment there has gotten so much better. <laughs> Um, and the other, the other wacko who was sending my husband um, photos of the sunrise has, oh, also, has also been booted out. She's part of that group? Yeah, she's part of that oh, group. Oh, I didn't so realize I managed, that. So I managed to, um, you know, get all the, the toxicity out, but it's been great. But one of the issues that we've been recently dealing with, my husband and I, is that we're in a beach house with ten people. And, or eight people, and you know, the, the walls are made many years ago, and I'm there with my husband, oh, so I'm on Lordy, the beach, and so relaxing, going. and so, you know, my husband's here in, in another room, and other people are here in us, and this one's here in that, and the whole thing is, so, is that a bad thing? If you're, and, and we can talk to well, the vacation no. guys that are going to be talking to us later, but at the end of the day, no, you're no, on vacation, you want to have sex, you're relaxed, it's the best place to do it. Um, <laughs> I, I other, other than in the backyard on the, on the pavers um, after a pool night, but I'm saying like you're in the beach house, it's romantic, you're having wine, you're relaxed. You know what do you do? I have to tell you, more power to you, Laura. Put a strap in my mouth. I mean, what do you do? I tell you, um, I'm pro I'm the uptight one, as you all know. Robert, are you listening? Um, I probably would not. So you would one to do it if there were other people in the house in thin walls. Yeah. So well, my sons are. So thrilled to be listening to this conversation. I did this on purpose. No, like, <laughs> I like to watch us grow. Christopher is melting into his chair. Listen, just so I you know, mean, Mom had, had sex at mouth. least three times. She had sex. I remember when I first um, was engaged to my husband. We Lucas got married. Is, Lucas is blushing. And I had to tell my parents that I was I pregnant. Bet. I bet. And my father turned around and he said to me, "Does that mean you're having sex?" And I said, "Dad, I've been married two years. I'm having sex." <laughs> Um, but no, it's good. Yeah, I it's, never had used the word sex in front of my father. Oh, isn't that funny? Not once, I swear to you. Well, you know, listen, it's, uh, it's funny, but I wouldn't stop doing it if somebody was going to hear me. I try to make the music a little louder, but we're, we're away for <laughs> the weekend. Giveaway. We're away for the weekend. We're going to do it. They were pretending um, to fight. Yeah, we were pretending. <laughs> everybody thought we were fighting. So, so did the others in the house, like, try to, like, um, you know, um, Punk you or something, and no, like start was banging all, on the door, start was singing, all, making whoopee or something no, outside no, the door. He said, "Are they having sex or are they fighting?" <laughs> oh, that's what you guys were saying. Okay. It was a, it was a little rough, um, but it was a lot of fun. You know, I just want to bring something up, and I know I'm going to go all over the place with this stuff, but when I learn something, I have to share it. And um, sometimes I learn something that I should have known. But um, you know, I had the shots in my neck, right? Yes, I've so had them in my back. We're going to talk about vacations later. Um, I have had problems with my neck for many years. And finally, when I went hiking in Peru, it took it to a next level after I had a backpack on my neck hiking for I don't know how many miles. Um, I had to come home and have the shots in my neck. And so I recently was thinking about going back and possibly getting one more just to kick it up a notch. But I found out that those shots are really bad for your bones. Now, I didn't do the research yet. Maybe somebody that's listening or watching could, could tell me. But yeah, yeah, I heard it's really bad really, for your bones. Because I'm thinking of going back for them in my, my lower Well, back. I think we should do some research. Let's and maybe we should get somebody on to talk about it. Because okay. 
Women have um, a huge problem with osteoporosis. Men have it too, but I think it's more uh, prevalent But sometimes women. when you're in pain, you'll literally do anything to get well, out of it. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you got to do the right research and you have to know, like, should you do it? I know, now yeah. you know I'm having sex too, Bobby. I, know, <laughs> I, I assume that. And I just want to say my husband wants it like four or five times a week. I really only need it okay. twice. Now it's too much information. We are having God, it. God bless you. So you had the shots too in your no, neck? No, uh, my mother went through that. Uh, osteoporosis? You can't do, every time you start to deteriorate the cartilage, so you, every time you get a shot, you weaken your bones and your cartilage. It's not good long term. Great, but I've what, done so it like six this, times. This yeah. is what I'm saying. So I just learned this, and I know I should have done the proper research before I had the shot. So I'm kind of mad at myself, and I'm mad at everybody else around me, including my husband and my business partner, who should have been like doing a little bit of research for me, a little bit. Oh, wait. Oh, 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 oh. oh See, my arm just, I love when I, go, I put uh, my arm up, and, and it makes like, oh, I, I call that my nana arm. No, I didn't have it. Look, my I've been doing my dips, arms. all you personal trainers but yeah so you, your mom has osteoporosis um with a spine yeah my, my mom has it tremendously bad it's so bad but anyway so anyway. i wanted to tell you that because okay. that's something we should we Good should know. You know i'm also going to be looking into along these lines and maybe I, my chiropractor, Dr. Ron Sinagra, who i credit for helping me with so many things is actually going to come on uh in the fall and uh i'm actually looking into something called decompression therapy okay which mm -hmm. pulls the um the vertebrae? The, the compressed vertebrae off the nerves. Okay. I'm, I'm struggling with the sciatica, and I think it's time to take it another step. Um, well, I would say do it now because, yeah. you know, you don't want to wait. And that's no shots. So. Yeah, yeah, you got to do something. So I just want to ask you, uh, Christine, I want because we've been going through this. Um, I know the subject's getting a little old, but um, we've been talking about it the last couple of weeks, some little slut um, trying to have some private time with my husband. So forgiveness or fool? If I forgive and I allow this person back in a group, am I a fool? Oh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I, I had have written her off like you did. Absolutely. Okay. So I Absolutely. shouldn't forgive her for the sake Absolutely. of the group. I should just say, you know, you crossed the line. You didn't know what you were doing. It's okay. And I should. Have you spoken with her about it? We did speak, and. Um, what was her? She, vibe? she, she was like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You know, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. When somebody tells you it's all in your head, it's all in their freaking head. They're full of shit. It yeah. wasn't all in my so head. So the vibe that you got from her when you spoke with her was not a good one. The vibe that I got was she was just defending herself, and this might be like this might be behavior that she's so used to doing that she doesn't even realize she's doing it because she's basically a whore. And when you're doing stuff like that yeah. all the time, I don't think you're forgiving her, whether I think it's okay <laughs> yeah, or not. Yeah. But I'm asking, like, should I and just move on and just be like, oh, you can I, hang out with us, know, and I'm not going to hold it against you. I might mm -hmm. stab you while you're sleeping, but I'm not going to hold it against you. Mm -hmm. I think that's a tough one. I I would have a hard time being friendly. I think. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I have a, a few. I'm people. trying. I'm digging down deep, but I don't yeah. think it's working. Yeah. <laughs> I have a few people in my life that uh, I'm annoyed at for certain things, and while I haven't cut it off with them, I feel like I keep them sort of at an arm's length. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Have a meatball if we're in a group or at a party or whatever. I but just don't I feel like could, I could trust her. Yeah. I wouldn't trust her. Yeah. I, I wouldn't trust All her right. for sure. I had to ask. I suppose I had if she's still that. friendly with other people. Well, that's what you it know. is. She's still friendly with another good friend, and so I don't want to be More the witch. More than one. But sometimes when you have a disagreeing with somebody and you get past it, sometimes the friendship can get stronger. Right? Once you, know, you can move past it. Well, you know, I don't know. I'm I don't think I can trust, trust anybody. I'm I just saying that sometimes... Yeah, I just kind of feel like this is her normal status quo behavior, and like I don't know, I don't know. I'm still working through it. Okay, I'm still working, but I wanted to ask you because you're the other side of, um, you know, of the opinions. It's usually I'm um, black, you're white, you're white and black. So I just every to now and then we actually do agree though. Yeah, we do. Do we agree that my tan lines look terrible with this off shoulder top? No. And they oh, have spray for that. That's I what know, I'm wondering. I know. I didn't even think of it. I'm getting way too much vitamin D. Yeah, but you know, listen, I'm, I, I'm wearing a rash guard at the beach, and I'm still getting, I guinea up so quick, it's not even I funny, know. like 15 minutes. I love it. Listen, speaking about guineaing up and going on vacation and being on the beach and getting tan, uh, what do we got coming up? My goodness, we have a whole travel theme show today. Um, coming up next on the couch, we have David Riedemann, who is in the hospitality business, and he's going to tell us all about what he does and give us some great uh, travel tips, hotel safety tips. Uh, things of that nature. We're going to talk about some of our favorite vacations. I have some packing hacks coming up right after uh, this next commercial. Be right back. Hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Steve. And, and we, we own, own this, this house, house together. together. Zap My Tax was so successful with our tax grievance. We saved over $1,700 in our first year alone. And now we're signing up again. In fact, we are so happy with Zap My Tax, we decided to save even more money and use Zap My Insurance as well. 
Zap My Tax, and Zap My Insurance. Two great choices and two great ways. Hi, I'm Stephanie Larkin, owner of Red Penguin Books. We are a book publishing company and we work with authors of all genres. Whether or not you've written a book or whether or not you want to write a book, find us on the web at redpenguinbooks.com. And thank you for joining us. You're watching The Living Room Radio Show at Strong Island TV. Hi, we're back. It's time for Christine's Corner. So as we mentioned just a short time ago, uh, we're going to be talking about all things travel. And I don't know about anybody else. I bet you are the same as me. Um, packing is very, very stressful. I really would like to bring my entire closet with me. I pack, I repack, I take things away, I add things. I, I, it's very, very terrible for me. A girl needs options. So. In the traveling I've done, I've come up with a few little hacks that do help me pack a lot in a small space. Um, and the first thing is, is you need to come up with four basic outfits, and you'll see that in this upcoming picture. Four basic outfits that work well together. And if you look at the top, wait, there's wait, four I outfits. To, I just have to interrupt you right now. You're because, No, I have to interrupt you. You know why? Because. I have exactly the same thing written down. Oh, okay. See, <laughs> great minds think alike. We're starting love to actually it, love think it, alike. Love it, love it, love it. So I start with four outfits that work. And then I think about, well, what can I do with these outfits to make them more outfits? All those things mix and match. And you could take the plaid shirt that you have with the jeans and put it under the dress and wear it with a little pair of sneakers. And you have a cute little day outfit for shopping or going out to brunch or lunch or, or even an early dinner. Um, put that same little dress on with a pair of heels and some sparkly jewelry Something and you different. can go to the fanciest steakhouse. Add a brightly colored cardigan and you can transform every one of those outfits. Tie that plaid shirt over the dress Yeah. and mix, match, mix, match. Now this is only a few pieces in the pictures you just saw. Okay. That's still not enough for me because what looks good on Monday might not look good on Tuesday. So I then start throwing more things into the and you the, roll and I roll and I roll down and the same thing. I roll. <laughs> oh my God! Let's well, you roll, know what? Because we're smart. Because we're smart. Let's roll. Everybody knows you can fit more in a suitcase if you roll, and exactly. it doesn't wrinkle. And every suitcase has that stupid bumpy bottom. If you have things flat, they get all those yeah, they marks do get in it. Oil. Roll your shirts, roll your blouses, roll your dresses, and fill the bottom of your suitcase. Then take your pants, and if you see how they are laid out on top with the ends of the pants laying over, then roll again with more tops, pajamas, underwear, etc. Look at how many things you can fit yeah, in that suitcase. Yeah, you can suitcase. get a lot. I actually wrote that down okay. too. Next, take the pant legs and pile them over the second layer of roll, okay? Then I just lay on my take cooking. your socks <laughs> and scarves, which will totally transform an outfit too and make it look like something else. Pants, socks, belts, and put them along the corners as you see in the picture. And then you fit all of those in there. Then you flip that top over, sit on it, lay on it, jump on it, and click those latches and you have everything you need for a trip in one. Suitcase. More importantly, go to the website and see all the pictures. Absolutely. You got a lot We're going to post there. those, and uh, I think uh, it's a way to get a good 72 outfits in one suitcase. Oh my God. How many outfits do you pack for a week? Oh, I'm insane. I'm insane. I went down to the boat to I sleep the at the thing, boat yeah. the other night, and I was going to work. Monday night, this was. And I was going to go to work right from the beach. I took a beach tote bag. I couldn't decide what I was going to wear to work the next day. And I must have put 17 different things in wow. there to yeah, decide. Crazy. And you want to laugh? What? I did wear one of the pair of pants that I had taken with me. Yeah. But I wore a top that was already on, on the, the beach. Boat. I know. I do the same thing. Oh, I like my clothes. A girl need options. We what need options. Oh, we're going to talk about this because when we went hiking, we were only allowed to bring for the whole hike, like three pairs of underwear, two pairs of pants, one short. I was like, oh, oh I was yeah, going yeah. to like epileptic yeah. fit. 30 pounds. Yeah, yeah, you were only allowed a certain amount of weight, and I was like, oh my God, oh, how Lord, am I going to do this? But crazy. you want to know the truth? Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. But we did it. Christopher lived in Portland for a couple of years, and when he moved back home, um, I could only bring a carry-on. I wasn't checking anything because I had to check bags of his stuff. He lived there for two years, coming home. So I did that whole capsule thing, and I went with a black, white, and red theme. It worked out beautifully. However, I was so sick of those black pants yeah, by the end of the week. I know, Let me tell I you. Know. Let me I tell know. you. Gets so, to you. 
All right. Well, this is awesome. So we're gonna we're gonna be speaking to our next guests about about uh, tips for other tips for women in traveling. Exactly. Basically, wear your brass knuckles, right? Uh, I don't know. We're gonna see what David Reedham has to say right after this. Have you heard? Laura's neighbors save thousands of dollars on their property taxes by using Zap My Tax. But her husband filed with the other property tax grievance company. He'll never make that mistake again. Laura went to ZapMyTax.com and got the savings she deserved. Zap My Tax, saving Long Islanders money on property taxes for over 25 years. Look for us in your mailbox or call 631-889-5500. Or you can sign online at ZapMyTax.com. Hey, welcome back to the living room. <laughs> I'm Christine McCauley. We're here with Lori Fay, my co-host, and you are watching the living room. I'm here with David Riedemann, who is in the hospitality business, and as we said, he's going to give us some great tips on uh, traveling as a woman, being safe, being in hotels. Welcome, David. Thank okay. you for being here. Hey, thanks a lot, Lori. Very nice to meet you. And thanks for coming on. Lori doesn't have my back. Thanks for having me on. Uh, what an honor and a pleasure it is to be here. David grew up here in Massapequa. We actually went to junior high together. We did. So tell us a little about your background. Sure. Here. Well, I, I, I just learned a lot here. Uh, <laughs> You've seen nothing. I, uh, I work for a hotel company and I'm on the road constantly. So um, even though I'm not a woman, I like to pack nice things too. David um, is very dapper. He always looks sharp. <laughs> yeah, I like my clothes too. I definitely do, and I like variety. One of the things that I learned along the way was to kind of keep things monochrome. So, for example, I have four colors of trips, basically. That's exactly what I have. Exactly. Four colors. We have black trips, we have blue trips, we have gray trips, and we have brown trips. So, essentially, if you keep your standard colors together, uh, chances are you're going to be able to mix and match with shirts, and now we gentlemen don't usually wear a lot of ties. We wear what pocket squares. What is that with squares. the ties? My, my uh, older son just hates wearing a tie. Yeah, you it's know, guys are over the tie thing, and he's a he's in you know finance. My husband's a tie guy. How do you feel about your bra? I hate it. As a matter of fact, oh, right. oh, tonight is it, is I'm wearing the boobies. There's no bra, oh. just boobies. Right, Again, a little TMI. Well, you know what? Everybody wears these things. But truthfully, so you, you feel like the tie is like a bra. It's like choking you. Well, it, it's kind of restrictive, but I think that also styles have changed. Okay. I mean, you know, we all go through uh, different uh, cuts of fabric, and certainly with men, pocket squares are very in. Yeah. And they're very light to I pack. like them, too. I they're like the light pocket square. And they're I also like yeah. the tie. It gives a nice I like I like a crisp shirt with a tie. I like cufflinks. I'm, I'm, I, I like love that look. Too. It's I my favorite. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but let me ask you a question. Sure. Regardless of the clothes that you're going to bring on the trip, is it different for a woman to travel than a man? Like, are there things that we need to be more aware of than a man? I mean, I have been traveling without my husband recently over the last few years. And, um, you know, it's a little unnerving walking into a hotel at 11 o'clock at night, you know, parking your car, going from the parking lot into the hotel. Is there like a specific set of things that women should be more aware of? Do men target women that are traveling alone? Hmm. Stuff like that? Because that's what I would be, you know, that's what I want to know. I'm always leery. So I okay. Yeah. Well, a uh, lot of different questions, but uh, to talk to the security piece, I think it's really important for everyone to be painfully aware of their surroundings. Mm -hmm. For sure. No matter where you are, no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, women are hyper-conscious about it, and I think that if you're going into a hotel, you need to know where all the entrance points and exit points are. Uh, I often suggest to women travelers to ask for women to bring their room service to their rooms, specifically ask for the same a gender. Female? Absolutely. Should, should we announce to the, should we go we to the... We have stalkers um, again today, people. If you watched last week, I'm sorry to interrupt. We have some people watching us. <laughs> should, we, should we go to the uh, concierge and let them know that we're traveling alone if we come in? I think you can easily ask the person at the front desk. Say, just say, I'm like, I'm alone. Female and traveler. And these days, most travelers are women. Oh, really? Absolutely. Really? Business travelers make up 
uh, most most of business travelers are women. Really? Yep, That's shocking. Certain. I didn't know that. No, absolutely not. We, most but of in, women business travel. Is that what you said? Sure. Wow. Most of business travels are travel, travels absolutely. are women. Absolutely. That's I did not really know that. And leisure travelers as well. I mean, you know, everywhere you look, you're seeing pictures of, of women traveling. Do you, so. do, there's cameras everywhere now. So like, you know, you're in a parking lot, you park in the car, you're going into a hotel. I know there's cameras all around. Everywhere. But I am, I am very aware because I'm very mm -hmm. nervous. My father's a retired uh, detective. So I'm hyper, you know, paranoid that I always think that someone's, especially at night, mm -hmm. you know, during the day it's different. You can go, because yeah. I was recently in Florida running around and I had to go from one part of Florida to the other, park my car, and go into the hotel at 11.30 at night. Mm -hmm. I was looking in the stairwell oh, and I'm, stuff. I'm very aware, even if I leave the mall at night, or we, we mentioned, I was telling to David, I won't get into an elevator if there's just yeah, a man. Yeah, 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 um, saying that. And you were surprised by that, but um, I don't know, on a... Head so when you travel, so when you travel on like a plane as a woman alone, is there something like we should know? I mean, is there? What are your tips as for women traveling alone? Well, I, I, if you're traveling on a plane, chances are that there's a lot of people, you know, around you, if not on top of you. I mean, well, they say that, but then you put your kids on a plane and they say we don't, don't do it. Mile High Club stories. No, 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 I'm not in the Mile High Club, but they say like I put my children on a plane alone and they said don't do it. So, so are women targeted? Like, do oh, people know, you know, like that you're you're getting off? Like, I'm getting off at eleven o'clock at, at West Palm Airport. I'm going to get my rent a car. I'm by myself. What should I be aware of? Right. Well, I think it's okay to uh, let the uh, check-in clerk know that you're uncomfortable walking to the parking lot by yourself and ask to be escorted. Oh my I, God! I I've always wanted to do that, and I've always been say, embarrassed to do it. Hotels are typically very accommodating to their guest needs and so would you say we just have to ask if we have a concern a fear a need well I think you don't get what you don't ask for okay there you go. so I think every question is a fair question okay and people and don't roll their eyes and go oh look at this bitch she's so needy well I you know if safety is an issue that's of concern uh, you've only got one shot yeah so I would rather be a little Embarrassed, then unsafe. Then, then I get totally personally. With you. That's nice to hear. Do you, no. as so you, I'm sorry, you, the hotel business. Yeah, so yes. I work for a hotel company and uh, I'm in sales and I frequently travel mostly within North America and oftentimes I am delayed due to weather or other issues and so I can arrive at my destinations at very off hours, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, what have you. As a man, and, are you uh, nervous? Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily nervous, but I'm always aware of my surroundings. Okay. I make it a habit of looking left and looking right and looking behind yeah. because you just don't know. You don't know, you don't know who's parking in, garages. Sure. A lot of hotels have parking garages. And, and as you mentioned earlier, cameras are everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, cameras aren't going to take an immediate action if something happens. So right. it's really important. You can do little things like keep your phone on record when you're walking oh, in areas. Well, that's a great that's tip. A that's a great tip. tip. Yeah. You know, okay. so that, you know, again, it's not going to defend you. Yeah. But every piece of evidence that you may need if a situation like that occurs, you just want to take reasonable action steps. Okay. Is, is guest security something that um, is discussed often when you have business meetings with your uh, company? Absolutely. So security is always in the forefront of not only travelers' minds, but on the minds of employees as well. So we want to make sure that when you're staying in our hotels that you are first and foremost safe. And in fact, the airline business does this better than most. They often say safety is our primary concern. So they're going to be more concerned that you are safe and you're going to know what to do in the event of an emergency rather than are you going to be happy with the snacks and the drinks that they're true. serving. True. It's true. Which oftentimes are kind of, uh, anyway. So. As long as they give me wine on the flight, I'm absolutely See, fine. Wine I don't need to flight. eat. I like to drink my hey, calories. There you go. Perfect. Um, and I'd rather eat my calories. That's right. I'd rather eat mine too. So after you arrived at your hotel and you checked in, what else is there that we should know as women to make, uh, make our question. trip more pleasurable? Right, so um, with female travelers, you know, always request a room closest to the elevator. Okay. So that you're not walking down what you feel may 
feel okay. like blind corners. That's okay. Good. And this, I assume you should make these requests. I know you have a few more. Um, mm -hmm. When you book the room versus when you get there, you have a better chance then of getting... Absolutely. But yeah. the, the, the more information you know when you know it, the more prepared any facility is going to be to accommodate Excellent. you. Excellent. Yeah, the more lead time you give anything. Okay. So yeah. near an elevator. Near um, an elevator. What else you got? Um, again, if you're ordering room service, ask for your uh, so meals to be delivered by... Uh, a female employee. If we're looking online what for a hotel, what idea. should we what should we be Googling? What kind of hotel? Motels bad for women? I don't necessarily. I personally wouldn't want to stay in one uh, unless I didn't have enough money to stay into a nicer place. Because but but sometimes you need a ninety nine dollar room. I mean, is a motel Absolutely. like a bad um, option for a, a female alone? A lot of the alone? major chains uh, have what we call limited service properties. Okay. Uh, whether it be a Hyatt Place or a Hilton Garden Inn or a Marriott Courtyard. Uh, where these are limited service properties, in other words, there's not necessarily uh, a bell service to yeah. retrieve mm -hmm. your luggage mm -hmm. from point A to point B. Yeah. I've actually so stayed in some of the places you just mentioned, and, and I think we've gotten fabulous service. I and mean, we're not talking about Motel 6 in any of those that you just mentioned, but, um, um, you know, the... But I think what, the key you say, here garden or is... Whatever. Uh, uh, you know these limited service properties yeah. uh, the, the key here is if you do feel uncomfortable and you don't want to drive your car to the back of the parking lot speak pull up. up to the valet uh, area even though there's no valet service you pull into the port of Cachere, right lock your car walk to the front desk and say I'm checking in and I'd like to be escorted from the parking lot I swear Beautiful. in my life I wanted I to ask for that I, I really love, appreciate you saying that because now we know we can ask and now people aren't going to go oh my god she's tip. such a you know high maintenance yeah. well they want you safe they don't want you dead yeah yeah and they want you to feel comfortable too yeah. right people yeah. want you to feel comfortable because even the strongest women and the loudest women like myself you know somebody gave me those um one of the girls that um used to work for me who I fired because she was a loser um actually gave me those um Claws that you put those brass knuckles. No, like with claws? it was it was like a thing that you put on your fingers, and they had t tiger. T uh, Je uh, Jenny McCarthy advertised them like a tiger thing, but I would never use them because I would feel like I would never have the strength to use them. Right, but I suppose if you have something like that, and coupled it with some of the tips we got from Master Frank Gorini about yeah. uh, protecting ourselves and how yeah. to escape someone's grip, we, we're really digressing here, but. No, That's it's good to know, but, but traveling as a woman is a little intimidating sometimes. You know, it's really funny. I'm not going to play this message, but my husband told me it was so it was so pertinent to tonight's show. Um, I, I, my husband had gone on a trip, and I was home by myself, and I had to do a few things, and I said to him, you've crippled me because, um, you know, you do everything for me. My husband drives for me. He's aware of everything going on. I'm just walking like a prima donna into the hotel with my little bag, and he's got everything else covered. He's actually made me, you know, cripple. He's crippled That's me in that way. So okay. over the last couple of years, I've been doing things without him, and it's good for me to have to walk into a place, remember where I have to go, get my pair. You know, when you're when you're with a man all the time, they do a lot of things for you. So it's really good to know these little tips. I'm but I think the same thing would be true if you were leaving the studio and you were leaving the studio by yourself and it was dark and you were locking it up. Yeah. You use Absolutely. reasonable common yeah. sense. Absolutely. Look to your left, look to your right, leave your phone on record, walk to your car. Yeah. If you feel that somebody's invading your space, make some noise or make noise. Yeah. or dash. Yeah, I would yeah. never feel comfortable walking out of an airport and going to get my car in a park. No, I, I would, would never be. do it. I would not. Be I don't even all. want to go to the mall by myself. Yeah. No, because we're because yeah. we're babies now, us women, yeah. because we're afraid. You know why we're afraid? Because people are crazy. Yeah, people exactly. are crazy. Well, these were all great tips. Tell us how to find you. How to find your your business or your Sure. Well, well, your Facebook? Okay. Kristen, go ahead. <laughs> if you have more questions for David, you can look for him on Facebook at uh, David Readerman. And I'm sure if you messaged him with some uh, travel questions, he'd be happy to answer them Thank for you. Thank you so, so much. Oh, my uh, pleasure. David's going to stay you. on the couch with us. Lori's going to give us some uh, tips on how to save money while we travel. Okay. And we're going to talk about Fabulous. some funky travel fashions as well, and some of our favorite vacations when we come back right after this commercial. Great. Hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Steve. And, and we, we own, own this, this house, house together. together. Zap My Tax was so successful with our tax grievance. We saved over $1,700 in our first year alone. And now we're signing up again. 
In fact, we are so happy with ZapMyTax, we decided to save even more money and use ZapMyInsurance as well. ZapMyTax and ZapMyInsurance. Two great choices and two great ways to save money. I got Don't it. Like people Hi guys, welcome back to the living room. I am Lori Fay, otherwise known as Little Guy's Gal. I got a lot going on. Um, one of them is saving money because I like to save my money so I can wear it on my feet or carry it in my hand. Or um, around her waist. Or around my waist, because everybody knows I love a luxury belt. Um, so anyway, um, I learned a few tips on how to save money while traveling, or before you travel. Um, first one I learned was, when, and, and you guys probably know this, but maybe you've never connected to it. You know how you go and you look for a flight on Monday, and it's $152, and then all of a sudden, you go to look for the flight on Wednesday, and it's $178. It's because the airlines are tracking your cookies, and is it your cachet or your cash? cash. Your cash. They're, they're tracking your cash on your browsing history. So what happens is they know you looked for a flight, and if you don't clear your browsing history, or if you don't, um, if you don't browse oh. privately, they know that you're looking for the flight, and that's why the flight went up. So before you go on Google, change your setting to browse privately so that they don't know what you're doing. And I'm going to tell you this right now, people. If you're signing into your Google account at home and you're signing into your Google account at work, they know it's you. They know that you looked at shoes yesterday and they're going to shove the shoes in your face today. They're going to raise the price of the flight. That's 20 bucks. a fantastic tip, Lord. So you have to know that, okay? I, I once uh, heard that you can get a cheaper flight if you look 54 Tuesday. days before your flight on a Tuesday. And Always on a Tuesday you have to book your flight. Does it work like that with hotels and, and rates? You know, I... And I, I guarantee, really thought about it. well listen, okay. everything is based on supply and demand. Everything in life is based on supply and demand. So if you have a hot husband, the demand for that guy is going to be a lot of higher. Speaking of hot husbands. I got my hot husband in the house. <laughs> Tommy um, Faye is in the house. Tommy Faye just walked in the room. So, so everything is based on supply and demand. And uh, the government is tracking us. Everybody is tracking us. Everything that you do is being watched camera, browsing history, you're on your phone, everybody knows what you're doing. So yes, if, you, if you're looking for a hotel room, if the, if the um, hotel has any kind of tech department, they know that you looked at a, a one room suite on Tuesday from your computer at home, they're raising the price when you look for it at your computer so you at work. That is a fact. History to private. private, you have to browse private, privately. Right. Okay. Another okay. piece do that. of this is that if you have an Alexa, at home or something like it, yeah. you're handing it to them. Yeah, you're giving wow. them the information. I hate that thing. I actually unplugged wow. it in my kitchen. What else I, you got? Because I don't fun. want everybody to know where my husband is. I'm only kidding. Also, um, everybody's oh, going to know this one. Sending them pictures. Use your credit card to, to get points. Everybody knows this. I like to pick two credit cards, my Amex and my JetBlue um, MasterCard, just so that you can actually like earn the points in the same place and actually use them. If you've got 50, oh, look. I know my credit card by heart because I, I almost have Lori's memorized. Yeah, I, I got the whole card. I'm not going to say it because then you could rewind it. But um, so that's the thing. The other thing that you could do to save money while you travel is is eat one meal in a day. So eat one big meal. I am a huge advocate of checking into my hotel, going right to the farmer's market or the local grocery. I get my apples, my bananas, my fruit, my water, and I, I have my breakfast in the room. Um, unless they have a free breakfast that's just, you know, like fruit and vegetables, most of the time it's for, for my diet purposes, I wouldn't eat it anyway. So I like my fruit, I go get it in the hotel, and I don't go out to a big fancy breakfast. Yeah, Christopher and I did that, that in, in Portland. Yeah. Uh, the hotel we stayed at had like a cocktail hour. Yeah. That was our dinner. Yeah, exactly that. So much money. And it also helps you, like, for, you know, people that are weight conscious or fitness sure. conscious, you want to keep the weight down. Eat, eat, eat your breakfast in the room and eat your one big meal. Um, the other thing you need to do is know what you're going to need on the trip. So um, I'm a huge skier. We've been skiing for years. I have kids that ski. Um, you spend a lot of money skiing. If you are going to need an extra pair of ski gloves and you're going to have to buy them at the ski lodge, they're going to be $1,000. So you're better off buying a second cheap pair at home, packing it, and having the second cheap pair as opposed to having to buy a really expensive second pair. And, right. and that's happened. My husband had to buy a jacket 
for four hundred and fifty dollars because the zipper broke, oh, wow. and he never wore the jacket again. David has given me a great list of packing essentials that we're going to put up on the website, so things that you might want to remember. Um, so we'll do that sorry too. Sorry to interrupt you there. That's I okay. To mention that. That's a, um, so the other thing that that you can do if you want to save money when you travel is, is as opposed to getting two rooms, get a luxury house with a bunch of people. It is cheaper. We rented a villa in Italy. It was half the price of getting five rooms for ten people. Um, another thing we did when we were in Italy, as opposed to getting taxis and Ubers and everything else, we had a chauffeur for the day, seven people. I want to say it was about $200 a day, American money. Um, Peter, you can correct me if I'm wrong or if Tommy, but that, that I think is right, $200 a day we paid. That's a lot um, of money. Not between seven or eight people, it's not. To have a chauffeur all day? He took us everywhere. Yeah, it was very close. Yeah, it was very close to that. Seven people, Europe, but okay. Yeah, the okay. other thing you need to do when you go away is pack all your toiletries. Don't forget your stuff because when you go away, you're buying stuff. It's going to be full size. You're going to throw it out. It's honestly, it may sound cheap, but if you, if you pack right and you don't spend the money on that crap, you can get the extra pair of shoes. And isn't that what it's all about? Especially if you're. In I mean, middle. that's the way I look at. It. The other I, thing. I think that tip. Uh, just to add to that, is not to overpack. I don't overpack. When Christine was talking about the 72 outfits and she said, we were, well, I do not overpack, I'll tell you why. I live in leggings, all my stuff is really small, I roll it up, I do what you said, the fork, I do three colors and one bowl. There you go. So I do black, white, and maybe beige, and then I throw pink. That's it. That's my uh -huh. whole, first of all, it's my whole wardrobe anyway because I have OCD. So I don't wear blue, I don't wear brown, I don't wear green, and I never wear red. So bottom line is I only wear four colors, and that's, that's how I do it. Um, live like a local. If you want to save money while you're traveling, don't go to the, the hotel fancy restaurant where you're going to spend $400 and uh, an overpriced bottle of champagne. Go to eat in a local place where you're getting local food. We did this in Peru. We had fabulous meals. None of it was expensive. Right, and if you're coming to New York, leave your cowboy hat at home. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and we did end up eating in Anthony Bourdain's uh, restaurant uh, in Peru, which I'm glad we did that. It, it wasn't his restaurant. It wasn't his restaurant, but it was, it was one, of the, one that, that he, recommended, he recommended, but it wasn't, expen it wasn't crazily expensive. You know, um, Jenny McCarthy has a song on her show, and it says, We're Almost Never Right. That's what you could say about me. I'm almost never right. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say is take a few local tours. So you don't have to always go to the fancy event. You can, you can go to a $22 tour in a town that you've never been, and, and you can see where you are. They'll give you the basics, and then you can spend your money on other stuff. That's, that's the way I try. Great stuff, Last Lori. tip, last tip. Get your wine at the liquor store for your room. Pre-game. Pre-game. Pre that's what it's Sounds about. like a plan. Yeah, so the footnote to this whole thing was plan, plan, plan. That's right. You got a plan when you're going away. Yeah. That's what I got. That's what little guys, money, gals so. got for you. That's great. We'll be right back to talk about some Clear your cash. And some of our favorite vacations. Clear your cash. Hi, I'm Roger. And I'm Steve. And, and we, we own, own this, this house together. together. Zap My Tax was so successful with our tax grievance. We saved over $1,700 in our first year alone, but now we're signing up again. In fact, we are so happy with Zap My Tax, we decided to save even more money and use Zap My Insurance as well. Zap My Tax and Zap My Insurance. Two great choices and two great ways to save money. Hello, my name is Christopher Rathbun from Big Kahuna Productions, where we are artists first and photographers second. If you'd like to book us for our services, please call 631-245-9417. Until then, back to the Living Room Show on Strong Island TV. Welcome back, guys. We're here talking about vacations and all things female-related. Um, I think what's coming up next is we're going to talk about our favorite vacations. Now you're a big traveler, Lori. You no, not not really. I mean, I've been, to a few, I've been to a few places, but recently I've been to more, but... Um, you know, I like it. now. I'm I'm feeling like I could leave my children. I never really wanted to leave my kids. Okay. Well, so I did a they lot. They are in their twenties. Yeah. No, I did a lot of traveling with my family, but now I'm doing a lot of traveling um, without my family. It's starting to piss them off, but I quite frankly don't care. Um, All right. So I see we have a picture coming up. Is this a favorite vacation of this yours? This was my most recent favorite vacation. I went um, to Peru to go hiking with my best friend, his girlfriend, and my husband. It was his 60th birthday, and we were hiking uh, the Salkantai wow. Trail in Peru. It was five days of absolute insanity. 
um, ending with Machu Picchu. It was a fabulous trip. Looks I will incredible. never forget. I will never forget it. Looks it was like really did great. Did you have to train to do that? No, I mean okay. none of us trained. It was um, my friend that's that's hiking, hiking Kilimanjaro. He had a train. This was just. You know, we're all pretty fit. I'm a runner, so um, I felt like I could do it. It was yeah. the altitude was a little bit difficult, but it was mostly just really being out there in the world, seeing the way other people live. Um, you know, I've been to Beverly Hills. I've been to Paris. I've, I've bought expensive stuff. I'm kind of over that. I want to see the world. I want to hike. I want to go to Montana. I want to yeah. I want to see I feel. like the horses and 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 you the cattle. You want to be unencumbered. Yeah, I just yeah. want I just <laughs> want to be free from all that like, you know, I don't I don't want to blow dry my hair for dinner, man. I'm I'm over gotcha. that. Gotcha. So that was really a beautiful trip and looks, and I look, looks terrific. Yeah, um, it was a great trip. What was your favorite? Well, trip? I have quite a few favorites and, and Wait, wait, wait. I just want to back something up. The, that wasn't my favorite trip. It was my favorite I want to say hiking because oh, skiing hiking. with my kids that was is probably the fav okay. my favorite stuff. Okay. Well, I uh, you know, um, I've not been out of the country, and I really don't feel a desire. My son Christopher, who's here today, is kind of my world traveler. Um, I really kind of want to see this country. Yeah. Um, and one of my favorite trips, I think my favorite favorite, and Hawaii is beautiful, but I, uh, was Sedona, Arizona. Oh, I've been I couldn't there too. find those pictures. I adored Sedona. Beautiful. But Christopher, as I mentioned earlier, lived in Oregon for two years, and I adored Oregon. And I'm so happy that I got to be there twice while he was there. Um, coming up, it's a picture, maybe Christopher, you can remind me where this was. Um, the Columbia River Gorge. The Columbia River Gorge. Don't you hate looking at other people's vacation photos, though? Columbia River Gorge, um, gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Uh, the next one coming up was uh, Cannon Beach, I believe, and that's called Cannon Haystack Rock, stunning. And the, the Pacific Ocean is so totally different than the Atlantic Ocean. I'm a South Shore girl, I adore Long Island, um, but the, the Pacific Northwest West Coast Line is just magnificent. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, I am a South Shore girl at heart, and while this isn't a vacation, I am so fortunate that every weekend, I get to look at that sunset on a beautiful day at Tobey Marina. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like I am on a vacation. It is the most beautiful sunset in the world and uh, lucky me that I get to be yeah, there I every love the weekend. Beach too. It's yeah. just remarkable. Yep. Uh, so yep. that's like so my favorite. So what's your favorite trip? What do you do? Gosh, I'd be inclined to agree. I love the Pacific Northwest and I think for me one of my favorite places is Western Canada. Oh, I think okay. the Canadian Rockies are just outstanding. Uh, this summer I had the good fortune of going to uh, Calgary and seeing the Calgary Stampede. Wow. wow. And really experiencing the local culture and That's what I love. getting to experience a chuck wagon race and Things wow. that you know, I, would love I didn't to do even that. know existed. It you know, was, yeah, that's, it was what, awesome. that's what's interesting to me. Yeah. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to do the um, Montana survival trip, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do it with the kids. Nobody, they were like, "Lori, after two days, you're going to be like, where's the shower?" We didn't shower for three days, and everyone, we were getting a little crazy. Four days, we didn't shower. It was a little crazy, but I wanted to do that survival trip where you had to, you know, hunt for your your food and and Ooh. you know cook your own stuff over Ooh. like an open fire i'm yeah. into all that yeah, i don't get enough that, vacations that that's what i want to do on vacation I yeah, to me be that would a be little a little bit. extreme i don't yeah. kind of like the uh mm -hmm. having to forage for my food no yeah. you know what i don't mind it i mean uh, you know hey, tommy get right on that no he's into it we had a great listen in peru we we were hiking and we had you know granted we had a, a cook with us and they brought the food and stuff right. but Did it you was have sex in the behind the rocks Oh, uh, you know what? We didn't have sex behind the rocks, but we had sex in Lima, and I think we had sex in Cusco because we stayed in a beautiful. You pooped behind the rocks. I pooped behind the rocks. So oh, you want to yeah, talk see, about that's crazy? Too rustic oh, for me. I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, he, you don't even know what this trip was crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think Colleen me. has a feeling of what we did because she hiked in Thailand, but we were in the we were in the middle of nowhere, nowhere, and uh, we were just you know, and we, you were there two minutes, and all of a sudden have you're like, you I got to go to the bathroom. Done on a trip like that. I haven't. Yeah. Uh, I do also like the desert. I like Palm Springs okay. a lot. See, that's something I would love too. Yeah, yeah beautiful, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I but I am a city guy. I really like cities. Chicago is one of my favorite cities. New York, Chicago. of course. Yep, you yeah, got there it. You San go. Francisco. I mean, we followed up our, our crazy trip with, um, with a spa trip, but I, I like the hiking stuff. I want to do more hiking. I want to mm -hmm. do it while I can. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I would love to go to Oregon. 
I, I loved Oregon. Everything from the gorgeous coastline mm -hmm. um, to the city itself is, um, I'm sure my kids will laugh with the word I'm about to use. It's a groovy city. It's very groovy. Yeah, it's eclectic. Fun. There's artists we plan and a girl's shops, trip. Well, but Listen, I, I think we're kind of running out of time, but before we go, Are I just want to talk time? about what's oh your worst nightmare gosh. trip? Because I, I got really sick in Mexico. I lost five pounds in three days, which was great. Um, oh, but at the end of the day, vacation. it was it was crazy. I got sick. My son got sick. We went on a mother son trip, okay. and my son got tripped. Yeah, he was had, yeah. he was on the flight puking his guts up. And yeah, um, I, I guess sickness can really ruin a vacation because we had well, a drive. Well, it didn't ruin it, but it, okay, I, well, you know. we had a drive to Florida. It was myself, my mother, and my three boys. Um, Lucas, my youngest, who's here today, he's 22 now. Was maybe I don't know. He was still in diapers, so he was under two years old. And we took off early in the morning, and when we made our first stop, he slept the whole time. I went to touch him, and my hand fell off because he was on fire oh, with God. temperature. Long story short, we finally got to, I don't know, North Carolina. I took this kid out. He started puking. Oh, I, God. I undressed him. He was covered in a scaly rash from head to toe. Oh, my God. And here I am in bum screw uh, North Carolina trying to find a hospital. Oh my God! He had strep throat, scarlet fever. Finally, oh gets my God! Slot. They gave him this giant shot in his leg because we were traveling, couldn't get a prescription. Oh, it was a nightmare. That's about as bad as it gets. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Finally, get to Florida. Christopher comes up with strep two. Oh it my God! That's a nightmare. For like five days straight. That's a nightmare. And when we were driving home, driving, 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 in my nine-month-old car, it started to make a funny sound. Oh my God! Right. Well, one of the things we talked about before the show started was keeping your documentation in order, If you're, whether you're traveling within the United States or outside of the U.S. Make copies of things like your license. We put it all on Google passport. Drive. We Even are. if you put it on Google Drive or yeah. just to wrap take it up real quick, take pictures of it. That's a great Have it idea. in a separate That's what we do. space. Terrific so. idea. Yeah, Thank yes. you for having me on the show. Thank you for oh, coming. David, you're Thank the you best. for sharing it's it. So I, hope, I hope you don't think we're David absolutely David Raderman, he is such a gentleman. Just yes. a, a Thank consummate you. true gentleman. Um, and we thank him for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you all like my hair. We, we love your we hair. hair. We love it. We'll see you next week. Next week, and we're going to go out, take a look at uh, Lori and her grandma. Oh, uh, Grandma, I love you. I love you. Have a great week, everybody. Go out there and live.